Hello and welcome to this episode of Live with Lizzie Li. I am your host, Lizzie. Joining me today are the authors of a new book, Xi Jinping, The Most Powerful Man in the World. Adrian and Stefan, the book is widely circulated among Chinese scholars. I am so glad that you can join me today, Adrian and Stefan. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you, thank you for having us. So, so Stefan, I'm going to start with you. Why mm -hmm. is there so little that's known about Xi Jinping in the Western media prior to the publication of your book? Well, that's exactly why we decided to write this book. There are a lot of books about Donald Trump and Obama and Angela Merkel. And so we had been surprised that there was nothing about Xi Jinping, at least not an extensive biography telling his life story, his background, his family. Um, and I think it is because a lot of people in the West have not understood yet the enormous shift happening in the world. The United States and Europe are not the center of the world anymore. Don't tell anybody, but I think this is the reality. You may start with the title of our book, Xi Jinping, The Most Powerful Man in the World. Many Americans still believe that the U.S. president is the most powerful person in the world. Maybe he thinks it himself, but this is not the case anymore. Both Biden and Trump governed a deeply divided country. And on the other hand, Xi Jinping has absolute power in a country which is economically getting more and more even uh, to the United States. Believe it or not, or hope it or not, but I think reality has changed that the the, 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 the middle point of the world goes to the east. So Adrian, I'm mm -hmm. going to turn to you for the next question. The book really tries to get inside the head of Xi Jinping, one of the world's most mysterious and powerful leaders, uh, as Stefan just said. So without giving out too much detail about the book, can you share one or two of your key discoveries with our audience? Why do you think Xi Jinping is the most powerful man in the world? Sure. I mean, first, I have to say, I mean, uh, we found a lot of details uh, which are not so uh, famous to the most people in the world. I mean, people like familiar with China, they uh, know maybe that uh, Xi Jinping, the father of Xi Jinping, was a victim of, uh, even before the Cultural Revolution in uh, 1962, he, he lost all his positions, he was put under house arrest, then tortured and uh, put into prison. This maybe some people know, but uh, we found a lot of other uh, details, uh, like for example, that uh, uh, Xi Jinping, uh, the father, uh, had much more liberal views than uh, Xi Jinping has uh, now. I mean, uh, he was, uh, when the uh, Dalai Lama in 1954 studied in uh, Beijing, uh, uh, Xi Jinping's father was a contact person for the Dalai Lama. And then again, uh, after their opening up uh, under Deng Xiaoping, when they started again, talks with the Dalai Lama, uh, Xi Jinping Xun Saibian was, a, was a, the contact person, talked to the brother of the Dalai Lama, was wearing the, the watch of, of uh, which the, the Dalai Lama presented to him. So uh, there are a lot of interesting details uh, about the family. But um, to come back to your question, so um, what makes him so powerful? I mean, he decided, I mean, he's a strong believer in, in, in communism. And for him, it was a big shock for Xi Jinping himself now. It was a big shock, the, the fall down of the Soviet Union and of socialism in East Germany and other Eastern countries. And so he decided to have this uh, strong hold on uh, power. And uh, he also decided to make a much uh, stronger um, uh, be much stronger on the global uh, uh, stage. I mean, uh, under uh, Deng Xiaoping, it was more like uh, to keep a low profile and <laughs> to look what the others are doing. But uh, now uh, um, Xi Jinping really has the aim like to, to break the power of the United States and to change the world order. That's also why he is aligning with Putin. Yeah, this is a big change. Right. And since you mentioned, there's a chapter in your book which has many details about the persecution of Xi Zhongxun, Xi Jinping's father, uh, during many of Mao's political parties' rivals. 
I wonder why has that period of family trauma, which inflicted much pain on Xi Jinping himself, made Xi Jinping a more devoted believer in the party and its apparatus rather than the opposite? Actually, I a think very good question. Uh, it's a very good question because um, uh, I mean his family suffered a lot, and uh, his sister even committed uh, suicide. Uh, but he decided he does not want to have the same fate uh, as his father. And he decided he does not want to be a, a victim of the power, but uh, he uh, wants to be the power himself. So uh, he decided uh, to take uh, Mao Zedong as his role model, and he decided to become redder than red. Right, that's very helpful. Um, Stefan, I wanted to turn back to you a little bit and talk about sort of mm -hmm. the broader themes of the book. From where I am, which is the United States, it seems like US-China relations are locked in this antagonistic stalemate over almost everything from economics, technology, national security to ideology. And to many US business community leaders, China has lost its luster even to the business community. I wonder if you can tell me a little bit more about the view from Europe. Uh, how are things going and has, has Europe changed its view on China? Well, Europe is wakening up now because we see with the Ukraine war that big impact, the dependence on Russian gas has for our life and our economy, but our dependence on China is much bigger. Uh, German car companies like Volkswagen, Daimler, uh, BMW, they sell almost 50 or 40 percent of their cars to China. Siemens and BSF are similarly dependent. So we are very dependent on our uh, relationship to China. And I don't think that we are able or willing to stop it. And why should we do that? But I think when you see that a country is growing so fast and is getting so strong, uh, you have to realize that these are these are businessmen. And then you have to be a businessman yourself. You don't have to believe everything. Uh, but I think you have to see that you can get around with them and to be in a certain way uh, more independent than we have uh, just been. Uh, but during uh, the last months uh, and the Ukraine war, you can see that the whole world is changing in a speed we did not expect um, during the last uh, decades. Uh, and we do not really know how this will end, whether it will end in a, in a never ending war uh, or it will end in, in even, even worse things. But I think if you put it all together, we have to see that China is getting uh, stronger every day and every year. And we have to see why this happens. And at the same time, we are not looking into the future too much. You you never know, and we, we don't know either. Uh, and I don't even that Xi Jinping knows what the future will bring. Because um, uh, the, the development of China during the last decades was because they opened the country. They opened the country for the global economy. Uh, they they in, in, in the beginning was a working bench for the for the world. Now they want to change that, which I do understand that they just don't want to produce things for the rest of the world, but want to produce for their own market and want to develop themselves. Uh, this is definitely true. Uh, but on the other hand, um, you can see that she is closing down the country again, closing it up, uh, building a new Chinese wall around it. Um, and whether this will uh, be good for China and for the rest of the world, I have my doubts uh, because the, the history of China during the last decade shows that opening is the way to the future. If you close it down, I'm not sure um, maybe he will get into uh, troubles as other countries in the world. Thank you so much, Stefan. So Adrian, let me turn, turn back to you. We are at this crucial moment. We are just two weeks away from the 20th Party Congress scheduled to take mm -hmm. place um, uh, in less than two weeks, actually. What major changes, if any, do you expect Xi Jinping to take after this Party Congress in his third term? Of course, we are not uh, fortune tellers, uh, but uh, what can be said for sure, if he gets the third term and uh, everybody is expecting this, then, for example, about the zero COVID policy, he will be free 
to decide what he wants. So he may declare victory in the war against uh, COVID and may lift the limitations, which would be a good thing actually for, for China and for the world. But he also might uh, do the opposite. Uh, what is a more complicated point is what he will do about uh, Taiwan, because he is under some pressure now. A lot of uh, people in the interviews for the book uh, told us that uh, uh, he wants to do uh, solve this uh, unification uh, in this uh, time in office. Um, there was the idea in the past, uh, one country, two systems, but after uh, Xi Jinping destroyed one country, two systems in Hong Kong, nobody will believe him in Taiwan. So the only way uh, he can do this uh, is by war. And there are two options. I mean, he can wait until he is economically more strong through the Made in uh, China 2025 project and uh, uh, through the uh, dual circulation, which makes uh, China less dependent from the outside world. But he might also think that the best moment is now, because now the world is in turmoil. There's a war in the Ukraine, the uh, United States, and especially Europe is uh, busy with the war in the Ukraine. And he might think uh, that now is the best moment. So we might wake up any day after the party congress with the bad news. Right. And uh, Stefan, so Adrian just said, we are not in the business of fortune telling, but your book does conclude with a prediction or a warning rather. Xi Jinping is no longer interested in following examples set by others. He wants to put his own mark on China and on the world. I wonder if you can elaborate more on your vision of Xi Jinping's ultimate ambition. Yeah, well, he speaks very open about this. In 2049, when the People's Republic of China is 100 years old, China shall be the leading country in the world. The new Silk Road, officially called the Belt and Road Initiative, shall give him international influence. And he personally wants to be the person who reaches this goal. He is very ambitious, but ambitious people can be dangerous, as we know uh, from history. The other hand, but on the other hand, you can see during this time of the Ukraine war that, that the, the, the power of the world is changing a lot. Uh, uh, one year ago, less than one year ago, we got more than 50% of our, all our uh, uh, national gas from Russia. Now we're getting nothing from Russia. Uh, and Russia is obviously on the way to sell their uh, energy and whatever they, they else have more or less to China. So I think it will be a very, very big position if really Russia and China move together as it, as it looks like a little <laughs> bit now. If you enjoy our discussions here, I'm sure you would find value in our new powerful marketplace tool for investors, also called China Edge. It tracks, distills, and analyzes both Chinese language and English language materials about Chinese companies, business leaders, and government entities, and reviews the often hidden links between them. For our YouTube viewers, we are offering a limited time 50% discount. Just go to the link you see on the screen and use the code EDGE50. Also, sign up for the China Edge newsletter. It's a daily two-minute rundown of China business news you don't want to miss. The link is right here on the screen. You can also click on the link in the video's description section to get your complimentary subscription today.